What's good? What's good? YouTube, it's your boy Humble Warrior. Back at you guys now with another video. Um, here we go. I wanted to do this today, guys, because um, I actually took a moment to watch uh, Bronny James highlight videos or the video monologue they put on YouTube about his freshman year at USC. Um, I got to admit, guys, it doesn't look good for Bronny. Um, he, outside of raw athletic ability, meaning that, you know, he can make timely plays and, you know, dunk and stuff like that. It doesn't seem like he has much more intangible eyes to bring to the game. It also doesn't seem like he has the ability to take over a game. Um, damn near every video, highlight video that I saw, they were either down by double digits or they were tied. There was no really USC in command, period. So it begs the question, you know, how is he actually going to contribute to the Los Angeles Lakers? And furthermore, when Summer League kicks off, which I think is next week, I believe it is, how is he actually going to rise above the, the talent that's going to be out there playing for, say, a roster spot or, or a starting position or whatever? The majority of those kids out there are playing to make that roster. They're not out there to play for cardio. So his biggest issue is going to become, we all know who, who, who your dad is. Now we're going to embarrass you on TV because every single player that encounters him now is going to give him their best game. And he doesn't seem like the type to actually hold up much. I mean, I've seen his jump shot is more rhythm-based. He doesn't create well off the dribble like that. And it don't seem like he gets involved in many games. So he he's kind of like like LeBron was a free safety roaming on defense. He don't really lock down nobody. He'll get in the passing lane, depending on if you make a lazy pass or not, he'll make you pay for that. But outside of that, it don't seem like he, it doesn't seem like his skill set will, trans, will translate well to the, to the pro level. Now the question becomes is how is, if he does make the roster, which, more than likely he is. No matter how he performs in summer league, no matter how he performs in training camp, he's going to be on that roster come, uh, what, October, November. He'll be on the roster. The question becomes, how does J.J. reasonably implement him into the game without jeopardizing, you know, either moments of the game or, or pivotal times or whatever just to appease LeBron? Um... Despite what the media pundits say, because I read the quote that Skip said that Bronny will probably be one of the greatest ever. No, that wasn't that wasn't Skip. That was Nick Wright that said that dumb shit. It's unfair to this kid because if he doesn't pan out, let's say if his rookie is a complete flop, he averages two points a game or whatever, and he barely gets any any time. Then what's gonna be said? Oh, well, he really wasn't ready. You're going to LA where they where they expect where the expectations through the roof. You knew this when when he when they drafted the kid. I I said from jump they should have never drafted Bronny. Give that kid a small market, Orlando, Atlanta, where they don't expect much. I mean the fan base is, is at at best mediocre in terms of expectations. They're not expecting every year a championship. That's not what they do. He could have went to Milwaukee, he could have went to um Utah, he could have went anywhere else. Because according to reports, they have multiple teams that were interested in him. I would love to know that list of teams that are interested in him. Unless you're talking about Portland or Detroit or, or somebody like that, that that has no chance to make the playoffs. Then, yes, I can reasonably see them trying to go get him. But to say multiple teams, what multiple teams are we talking about? We're not talking about the contenders. He's, he's not going to make your roster any better by acquiring him. That's not going to happen. Now, you're talking about a two, three, four-year process here. If you got time to waste like that, then yes, you drop Bernie, you let him develop over the next two, three years, then you unleash him as, you know, a, a possible weapon or whatever. But you don't waste a pick on a guy that in college showed no real potential. He didn't do anything in college. And what kills me is the people that try to sway the argument or say, well, 
the dude behind him didn't do anything either. We're talking about Bronny James. We're talking about a highly sought after recruit in high school. And he went to USC with Dennis Robinson. They went there with the expectation to try to compete immediately. And what happened? They got their asses whooped like a badass two-year-old. They constantly got blown out of the games. They were never competitive. And Bronny himself was supposed to be a forefront to that. And he didn't do anything. But because he his his last name says, I'm LeBron James' son, I'm entitled to these things, so I'm going to go get it. And I'm not beating the dude up because, I mean, he like he said, he wanted to carve his own name. But the facts are the facts, sir. You are LeBron James' son, which means some of this shit is entitlement. People are going to cater to you more because of him. If he didn't do what he did from 03 to now, nobody would be looking at you. You would have never got drafted. You wouldn't have been a reasonable a prospect to talk about. But when you enter that draft, it, it, it shifted to you. They didn't talk about nobody else but you. I don't know how many pundits and, and news stations, stuff like that, covered you before the draft. Then when you got drafted in the second round, it became a national feeding frenzy about where you went, which everybody knew was going to be L.A. And to me, as a Lakers organization, you got one better than this. If you're trying to win, or at least if you're trying to be competitive in the West, drafting Bronny didn't do anything for you. The other kid I don't know about yet. But Bronny James is not going to make you better. They even, had, they even got a report that said Buddy Hill turned down an opportunity to play there because he wanted to go compete and win. He went to Steph Curry. And LeBron is supposedly better. He went to Steph, who doesn't have Dre anymore. Who doesn't have... No, Draymond's still there. He don't have Clay anymore. Clay's going to Dallas. But Buddy Hill is now in, in Golden State because he said he wanted to go compete and win. And L.A. had a chance to get him. Clay Thompson went to the Mavericks. And LeBron begged that man. He called him up and begged him to come to L.A. But he threw stones at KD for joining Steph, Clay, and Draymond in Golden State. Yet you're asking a, a soon-to-be washed-up Clay Thompson to come join the L.A. Lakers so that you can have some kind of firepower to, you know, help the Lakers be relevant again. Newsflash, LeBron. Y'all ain't going nowhere again next year. This is going to be another wasted year of you guys basically putting on putting on putting on trash on TV just to get numbers and just to get ratings and just to get your all-time scoring thing up in the rafters somewhere like 40,000 plus where it's going to take a few decades for somebody else to reach it but this is what it's for it's a deployable tactic to say well I'm the greatest of all time because I'm number one in scoring I, you know and he may be number one in assists before it's all said and done if he chooses to go that much longer but to say that he made, I mean, yeah, the history-making thing, both father and son, soon to be playing on the court in the NBA, that don't mean a damn thing. Because in the day, this is about winning damn ships and competing for championships and having your name constantly mentioned with that of the Bulls, the old, the old Showtime Lakers, the Celtics, the Spurs, dynasty teams like that. That's what it's all about. It has nothing to do with well, let me go draft my kid and give him an opportunity to play, even though other kids deserve that opportunity. That's complete BS to me, sir. Rich Paul should be ashamed of himself. So should J.J. Reddick. So, so should Jenny Buss. All those guys in the Lakers organization should be a damn shame of themselves. Because what in your right mind possessed you to go draft that kid? What did he show in either his highlight reels or his workouts that say, hmm, we should go get him because, you know, he's going to make us at least a few, well, we'll say two, three times better than what we were last season. What you, have, what you drafted was a project. You're going to spend the next two or three years of wasted money and salary cap trying to get that kid up to speed to where he can compete with the best of the best because once those lights go bright, there's no guarantee what he's going to do. Now, some people say, oh, he might surprise the league. If he does, then I have no problem with middle is wrong. But quiet is kept. What you do in college, more than likely, is what you're going to do in the pros. And there's also been guys that were, that were absolute dynamites in college that fizzled out in the pros. So his projections go one way or the other. I mean, but 
based on what we've already seen, it looks like it might not go anywhere because he he's not built to take over anything. He's not built to do that. Now, to be fair, LeBron should stay out of the stay out of his development stage. Let that boy come off the bench. Or let him go to G League for a little while. And I, I guarantee you there he's gonna find out the very hard way that, that entitlement shit means nothing when you got a bunch of a bunch of young adults that are fighting and clawing their way to try to get into the draft next season. It's gonna be guys in that G League that will every single night give Bronny what he did not want, which is that free ass work. And they're gonna be trying to embarrass him every chance they get. You're talking about guys that's 19, 20 years old that didn't get drafted, that didn't get looked at, and that happened to fall onto the G League standings. And now you're going to see them ride to the, to the, on the draft boards next season because it was going to happen. He's going to, if he does go to, to the, I think they're called the, um, it, it, I read it the other day, the G League team for the Lakers. If by some reason he actually goes there, they're gonna they're gonna put it on him every single night, night in, night out. The only way that he has a chance is that he has to make a dedication to work on his craft ASAP, to constantly be in that gym. But you don't see any workout videos of him in the gym. You don't see none of that right now. You don't see release footage of him in the gym shooting jump shots. You don't see none of that. But you go to show you this is a production. This is a show for entertainment purposes. This is to sell tickets. This is to have the Laker fan base get excited for no reason. Now they're going to be pissed off when they get to the regular season and they start losing games or they start putting him in and he's not doing anything. They're going to be pissed the hell off. I mean, of course he's going to try to go, you know, 100 miles every game because he has to impress his dad and AD and others. But... To all, to all of nothing, because if you're going 100 miles a minute and you're not making any production, then what are you doing? And it's going to come a time where JJ going to have to pull that plug on this project because you're trying to win. And you know for a damn fact that the T-Wolves, the Nuggets, the Mavs, the OKC Thunder, the Rockets, all those guys have gotten better. Then what, what possessed you in your right mind to continue to say, we're going to ride this boat to, to the damn sink. For what? You might not even be a playoff team with the way your roster is constructed currently. You might not even make the play-in tournament. Hell, the Spurs got better. With the addition of Chris Paul, they drafted Stephon Castle, and they're getting piece by piece, little, a little by little round of uh, Victor. They got better. And you best believe that Stephon's going to start, Chris Paul can come off the bench, and they're gonna they're gonna at least improve by 10, 15 games. They won, I think it was I think it was 19 games last season. So they got a good chance to win 20 or 30. Maybe even get the 40 wins. It just depends on the acquisitions they make during this free agency period. Which, like I said, they got Chris Paul, which is I think he was I think that's his 30 uh, free agency period because that's leadership in the locker room that you actually need. But you don't think those guys are improving? Memphis got better. Especially addition to that rookie now, the seven foot guy from UConn, he's gonna automatically make noise. So to sit here with a straight face and say that Bronny's gonna be the next greatest thing, that's a lie. That is a bald faced lie. If he was putting up, you know, twenty five to thirty a game in college and he was the run up for the Naismith Player of the Year award, yeah. No problem with saying it. Hey, that boy gonna be a stud. All he, but at that point, they would have said he was projected higher, because before his season started, they said he was 17th, probably going to Atlanta. I think Atlanta would have been the bad spot for him because he would have been in a position to play low key, under the radar basketball, which would have helped him out. Because in LA, you got this big ass, giant ass target on your back, ain't no way you can hide. So every game is gonna be highlighted by what you don't do. And God forbid if you're going to score two points or get a dunk, they're going to just show that one highlight over and over and over again. And they're going to break down that one play as to how you got that dunk. And if you watch the, the slow motion version, most times they let you go right onto the rim now. They don't even attempt to get in your way. They let you get to the rim, they let you dunk, and they let you get your moment of two and a half seconds of glory. And after that, they beat your head in with a hammer. 
So, I don't know what the hell the Lakers are doing. I wish to God that didn't happen. Because now this is a hot rod. All of this is a talking point for the media pundit head. Skip Bayless, Paul Pierce, stupid ass. Keyshawn Johnson, dumbass. Richard Sherman. Hell, thank God Michael Irvin didn't jump on that train. The only one that got sense is Stephen A. Smith. He's the only one that said this is stupid. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention the Knicks. They got better free agency. The Wizards could the Wizards might be interested in the season. Milwaukee hasn't done anything because they invested a lot in Dame Dame Lillard. But there's been there's been some interesting teams this offseason that have gotten better with what they picked up or what they traded for. So the West is gonna be a lot tougher. It's gonna be a damn it's gonna be a gladiator fest to get to the top of that damn number one spot. It ain't gonna be like it was last season. So we're gonna see, and not to mention Phoenix. We don't know what they're going to do with their pieces, but if KD don't stay, they still got a hell of a hell of a reload, and they got a hell of a lot of bullets in their gun. Because they got rid of some guys that I thought, I, I'm glad they got rid of, and they signed some guys that we, that were that's going to fit that roster piece. So even they're going to be a dangerous team to face. But to Bronny James, I will say this, man. You're doing the right thing in terms of not being on social media. Saying crazy stuff, man, because you don't need to add no gasoline to this big ass fire. But I will say this: they're coming for you. They're coming. From from the first game you play, once you step in that court, they are coming for you, and they don't care that you're a rookie. All they see is that you're LeBron James' son, and because we couldn't get him per se, because he got four rings now, we're gonna embarrass you. So I feel bad for you, I really do, because you're gonna find out the hard way, the 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 un the unfortunate mishaps of being um, an NBA legends kid, especially being on the court with him at the same time, and with people knowing that you know, hey, you, they're trying to hand the damn baton off to you now. The hell if they will, that's gonna be the mindset your entire rookie, probably sophomore campaign. They're going to make the Lakers make a decision to get rid of you. Because just like with, uh, what's his name, Lorenzo Ball, when he first came in, his son, his dad kept talking to BS every single game. They came after that kid. Now, to his credit, he put up, you know, decent numbers, but his shooting was terrible. It took him going away to somewhere else for him to get a little bit better. But he really didn't get all of that great, which is why I think he got the lead now because he, he got injured a lot. But his dad destroyed his career. His dad, he'll say it. His dad fucked him up. Bad. His dad cannot keep his mouth shut. He said, and I quote, my son Lorenzo will be the greatest ball player since Magic Johnson. I think, yeah. Well, yeah, since Magic. Or better than Magic. And what happened? In two years, Lorenzo Ball, Lonzo Ball was out there, bitch. He was gone. Nobody talks about Lonzo. Because they all say he was trash in L.A. It was unfair to him because in college he was lighting up teams. You get to the pros, though, baby. That, that shit don't matter. It don't matter. Because everybody out there can play as well or better than you. That's a fact. But I wish him the best endeavors this season because he's going to need it. But I'm going to need the media pun to stop being stupid. Especially those especially social media people. Stop being dumb. Don't hype this boy up for a hype train and then he go out there and get his head smashed in and then y'all start crying wolf. Don't do that. Because they're going to they're gonna make an example out of him. And I hate to see it, but it's going to come. Because the Lakers ain't going nowhere, so hell, with that being said, the next, the next thing to do is to show why you're better than this kid. We're talking about from the rookies, the sophomores, or whoever. Everybody going to get a boy's best shot because your dad's LeBron James, unfortunately. And because they could not get him in his prime, they're going to try to go get you. That's the nature of the beast. But let me know what you guys think. What would you guys think a reasonable rookie de season going to be for him? Not debut, but his rookie season will be like. And um, I'll try to keep doing these videos, guys. Peace.